So I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the uh, March 29th Conway Select Board meeting. It's six. It's actually 6:13. We've been having some technical Zoom difficulties, and uh, as usual, the meeting is over Zoom and it's being recorded, and you can watch it on our FCAT Media uh, Video on Demand channel at YouTube. Just FCAT Media, and you will find all of our meetings there. So the first item is minutes from last week. Did everybody have a chance to read the minutes? Mm -hmm. I, I think they look good. So I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of last week of March 22nd. I second that. Okay, I say aye. Yep. I see Phil saying aye. Yes. It says aye. I'm gonna call that unanimous. So we're going to try, if things aren't unanimous, we're going to try a hand vote and then we'll have a, uh, uh, or we'll do a roll call vote. Um, so we have a, a warrant. So the warrants are a little unusual. Uh, Tom put this warrant on, but accidentally left the usual warrants off when he posted this. So he reposted it almost immediately, but he missed the six o'clock deadline last Thursday. So we're going to vote the rest of the warrants after at about seven o'clock later on in the meeting just so we're we're copacetic with uh open meeting law so so this was the this was on the original warrant a conway grammar school warrant article uh for and now i don't have it written down how much it's for for eighteen thousand three hundred and eighty dollars and sixty seven cents Was that for the additional playground funds, Bob? Um, no, it's it's um, they were. I I looked at it earlier. There, it's it's uh, some payroll and uh, and some some bills that had to get paid. But they're they were a little unusual. I mean, we don't usually have a separate Conway Grammar School warrant article. Yeah, they were supposed to be paid two weeks ago, but. Uh, there was a mistake in picking them up here at the town office. Uh, the person who usually picks them up wasn't here, and the person who came in uh, didn't didn't look for it and didn't see it. So it got missed last time. So it's coming on this time. So I'm going to make a motion that we ex uh, that we accept the the uh, Conway Grammar School warrant article. Uh, it's a uh, W21 20A. I second that. I hear a second. Uh, everybody say aye. So it looks are, yes. Yes. Um, so, so now it's, it, it's uh, we have a joint meeting with the, the assessors, and uh, Lee is going to talk to us about tax classification. And I believe the assessors themselves will have to make a decision. And then eventually we're going to have to make a decision over whether we have a split tax rate. And Lee is going to walk us through uh, what we need to know. And uh, earlier in the meeting, we weren't able to, she's doing screen sharing remotely with a computer that we couldn't figure out how to do screen sharing. Unless Tom can figure yeah, it out. Uh, and, and I have, I have the, uh, I have gateway up Lee. If you want to just tell me that. where to go and, in Gateway, I, I can do it for you. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, you ready for me now, then? We're ready, Lee. Okay. It's your meeting. Well, that's the, okay, about halfway down the left column, look up LA5 Options and Certification. You click on that, Tom. Perfect, thank you. A classification hearing is for the purpose of choosing whether we'll have a single or a split tax rate, as, as just exactly as Bob said. And uh, in cities and all, you see that there are indeed tax rates to take advantage of the uh, businesses and industries that are uh, using the city um, utilities and all and I love I don't know what the ringing bell is but at any rate uh, and so the question often comes why don't we do that well the answer is shown here basically under LA4 values in the yellow boxes, upper left section, the total residential taxable value in town is 240 million plus. 
the total of commercial, industrial, and personal property together is, uh, let's see, 20, well, the remainder of 36 million. Therefore, if we went to a split tax rate in Conway, it would put a large burden on what we have for commercial, industrial, and personal property. Now, personal property doesn't hit the average individual too hard. We don't have too many that act, uh, individuals that actually have accounts that are billed because they're over $10,000 in value. We have Eversource. We have things like that. Under commercial, commercial property includes things like Baker's store, things like the post office, the village shop, shops, um, the bank. Um, it also includes all the property that is in chapter classification. In other words, all of our farmland, particularly all of our uh, land that's in forest management. And so these are the areas that would be proportion- taxed proportionately differently from the rest. And in the past, Conway has vote- not ever voted to do that because our commercial and industrial and orchard equipment and formerly the little sunset garage, bites garage. Uh, we've seen that most of our commercial, industrial, Mike Kirkalanis, uh, are Conway residents who contribute in other ways also, but who are trying hard to keep their business going in Conway. The cost of doing business in Conway as opposed to elsewhere where there's better freight uh, delivery and, and travel, where you're closer to the good roads, is a consideration that businesses have to take into, you know, something as a fact that businesses have to take into consideration. So thought has always been that the choice was to prefer not to burden them any, any further. So there's the difference between a single and a multiple tax rate. Now, you'll see I just, well, in the middle of these three columns, below the first section, it says residential factors selected. I just put a one in mine. You should be able to see it in blue. And if we choose a residential factor of one, that gives us a single tax rate for all classes. And what we're applying for is a tax rate of $18.90, which is really a wonderful uh, solution after having had the conversion and all. The conversion did increase our taxable values by about 2.5% on each property, and that helped limit the uh, increase in the tax rate. But this is $0.14 cents above last year's tax rate, a difference of only Seven and a half percent of seven and a half percent of one percent. So a tiny fraction above last year's. For seven, ten, seven tenths of one percent. Seven hundredths. Seven, seven one hundredths of one. Seven one hundredths yeah. of a percent. Point zero zero seven seven. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was so happy to see that, to tell you the truth. Uh so that's where we would come in with that. And what we need to ask you is, it's your choice as to whether or not we choose a residential exemption of one, indicating a single tax rate. That's the decision we ask the um, select board to make. So is it open the, for our, to have a little discussion about it, Lee? Is that okay? Ask questions, sure. Oh, I, I have a question about what what constitutes personal property? So you said that's anything that's like over ten thousand dollars. But what would be an example of personal? No, property? like somebody all, with all, a tractor. Yeah, all all of the contents of our homes and everything are exempt from that. Personal property that's generally listed and generally ends up being taxed on this category is things like a farm style tractor, a utility tractor, you might call it, not a ride on lawnmower. No. Okay. But maybe even a small tractor that has a bucket or backloader, things things like that. Okay. If you have um, horses that are, are uh, pets, basically, or, you know, that you use for your own enjoyment, 
uh, that not you don't you don't don't have a horse breeding facility, but these are your own own personal animals. Um, things like that are what gets listed and valued. If the, the total value, value over pardon? ten dollars, the value has if the total value goes over ten thousand dollars for the account, then the account gets billed. If it's under okay. ten, it doesn't get billed. Yep, we passed that ten ten thousand dollars exemption a few years ago at town meeting. Because we had so many silly little accounts that did not bring in enough to pay for the bookkeeping on them in Jan's office. Questions? I have a question just about the the factor, um, the, about what you asked, about the factor being a, a, of one. What would be the arguments yes. in favor of a higher or a lower factor? Well, let me see if I can put in two. Lee, can I give my answer to that? Please. And 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 you know, and then you can correct me because maybe I'm wrong. But but this is one of the things that we talked about a lot in uh, in Select Board 101 school as to you know Good. whether to have a, a split rate or a joint uh, or a single rate. And and to some extent, the way it came across to me is that if we have a split rate, um, you are going to be drawing some ill will from the commercial side of town you, you know they, they they don't view themselves i don't think especially in our town as you know uh big uh big corporations that are rich and and can afford to pay a lot of taxes they're 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 just us really and uh and so if you're going to do something like have a split rate and charge them a higher higher rate than the rest of town you better be prepared for that and also be do it because you're going to make a lot of money at it. You, you know, it, 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 you wouldn't want to do this and then really not make any appreciable money at all. And, and we, our commercial property, our, I mean, our commercial businesses are so tiny that in order to make any appreciable amount, we would have to charge them an incredible rate higher than the personal mm -hmm. rate. And, and that feels even more unfair. Mm -hmm. And so, so. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I know this is a, a decision that we make every year, but it always struck me as just sort of a, uh, um, sort of a lock, you know, just sort of a pretty obvious decision. That went, and I, I struggle to come up with a reason to do anything, but, um, so that's good. Well, I mean, I imagine Boston might have a split rate and, or, uh, you know, Springfield might have a split rate where they have a lot of industry in town. And they, you know, they're, they're willing to force the businesses in town to pay higher to make it easier for their citizens. But the difference here yeah. in Conway is pretty small between who, right. who the businesses are and who the citizens are. One of the arguments in the cities that do have it is that the industries may be very, very happy users of water for example, or water treatment due to the process that they that they have, that they uh, do. And also, uh, their trucking tends to be very, very hard on the roads. So the road repairs around the industrial areas are um, much more extensive than in the residential areas, and they tend to need to have better quality roads, um, you know, more uh, wide lane access roads, that type of thing. It pushed through. So those are other reasons why they have why they have split rates, yeah. So oh, our question to you then is um, do you choose to have one or two a uh, single rate or a split rate? We need to Could make there a, be a motion from the select board. I'll make I'll, I'll make a motion for a single rate. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor. Aye. I vote aye, and I hey. assume Phil does. So I would say this is unanimous. Yep. We're going to go for a single rate once again, not break our longstanding precedent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's great. Um, there will be papers for you to sign in person. Hopefully, uh, let's see, Thomas, if you wanted to 
I'll print out this page. I think maybe we could get the signatures right now. Oh, no, because nobody's in the office. Yeah, yep, there, yep. I'm we can still. do it tomorrow. Sure, if, if you can, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And um, we will be filing in the morning. And it's, uh, we hope to have the rate later tomorrow. In which case, Jan, I believe, will be printing on Wednesday. <laughs> yep. Now, I also must inform you, of course, at the bottom of the page, you'll see that our excess capacity at the moment is $348,703.16. Now, that means that we could still tax up to an additional amount equal to that. So we're below the maximum that we could tax, and we're still covering our budget very well. Yep. And so that's good. That's good for our... Um, levy limit the next year. Um, we will have significant new growth next year in a couple of properties. I'm hoping maybe Eversource is going to continue with their wonderful work of replacing everything in place because their new growth of $2 million helped us a great deal this year. What was that last sentence? It has a great what? As I said, their they're, um, new growth Replacing high tension lines and so forth helped us a great deal this year. They had gave us two million dollars in new growth. Ever sourced it? Value. Yeah. Tax, yeah, taxable value. Taxable value. So two million dollars is thirty six thousand dollars in actual revenue. Or actually close to thirty eight. And, so and that, be that has been terrific. all of the poles that go through Conway, all of the big high tension yes. wires, uh, a lot of the, yes. the the poles that they're on. Right. And that's apparently a multi-year project. So we can probably um, look forward to several more years of that. If, if we can find out exactly what their plan is, calendar-wise, we can plan ahead so that when they won't be doing it, we won't be looking, hopefully, for that money. So, Lee, they can just sign where it says signatures there? Yes, yes. If you want to go into Gateway and sign it electronically, I believe you can, but I still need hand signatures also to scan and show to the state that you actually did do it by hand. Okay? Is that excess capacity getting larger or smaller every year, or does it depend upon... It varies a bit. Uh -huh. It varies a bit, anywhere from 200 to, say, 365, I think. This, this is a lot, relatively speaking. We, we've been yeah. lower, and... and yeah. And there have been times when when I get a little worried about because we can't go over it, then we have to start cutting the budget. So right, um, year or two ago, there, we were there have been years times years I've been worried. Yeah, we were down to what one ninety a year or two ago, Tom. Yeah, and something like that, and that felt very anxious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One one okay. of the things that amazes me is how our our unions um, know this number, know what our capa excess capacity is. Um, it, during negotiations, they know the four towns, really? and and so when you when you cry poverty, they have the data right there to see whether you're stressed to the maximum, like you say you are, or whether there's right, you know, whatever. So yeah, we're 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 stretched to the pocket maximum of each taxpayer, probably. At least many would certainly feel that way. You know, so what an, an individual can afford to pay for taxes on their property, but we're not stretched to the absolute maximum of what Conway would be allowed to bill. Yep. Maybe we should figure out uh, what the um, what the tax rate would be if we spent three hundred and fifty thousand more dollars. No. <laughs> well, three hundred and fifty thousand is gonna be roughly a dollar and a half. So it's gonna put us up to about twenty twenty forty, give or take. Yep. Now, Tom, if you'll on the get back out of there and just go down to tax recap on the left. Uh, have you finished printing that? Yes. Okay. Now, over on the, we should find those directions. There we go on the left column. Go down just below where you were to tax recap, tax rate recap. I'm sorry. Okay. This is the final summary that goes in. It shows you that our total amount to be raised to meet our budget. It is eight million three hundred thirty four thousand four hundred sixty three dollars and eighty four cents. However, 
that is happily offset by estimated receipts and other revenue sources from things like motor vehicle excise, state aid, uh, local receipts, um, state reimbursements for state-owned land, all that kind of thing, the cherry sheet reimbursements to the town. Those are set off so that leaves us with a levy of money to be raised by taxes of $5.2 million plus $5,232,902 mm-hmm. <laughs> and that $0.84. So there's our tax rate of $18.90. And that's for the current fiscal year. So that is next, for the fiscal next year, year 2021 yeah. that we actually are just in the end of which is a bizarre time to be looking at this. Usually usually we get this done in in September or so. Yes. Yes, in probably late August, early September, I'll be coming back again with the figures for fiscal 22. We'll look forward uh, to it. This way, the bills that that Jan prints on Wednesday will be the final bills for 21, and they'll be reflecting these figures. They'll be reflecting this tax rate. And as the rate's gone up, the second half bill would be higher anyway a little bit than the first half bill. But what it'll do is look at the total owed for the year by each one of us. Look at mine, say, and then say, okay, you owed this much for the year. And on the fall bill, you paid this much of it. So you're simply going to pay the difference. Hello. Okay. Oh, yep. I was going to say I was afraid I lost it here. No, no. Yep. You're, you're good. Good. Okay. Any other questions, Phil, Erica? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, thank you okay. Lee. Well, thank, thank you very much. And I'm sorry well, about the technical difficulties, but now that I know what causes it, maybe we can do better next time. Uh, Lee, although uh, it's, Lee, not Lee. On, it's, it's not on the Hi, agenda, Phil. but we did want to talk to you about the... the uh, shelving system or whatever the shelving thing oh but um, before we go to that i just want to make sure that the assessors don't have to take a vote as well here we do have to vote actually um uh malcolm did not come on did he no no malcolm did not are you still there yeah i'm still here oh okay 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 yeah i move that we um Approve the tax rate recap as given with a tax rate of $18.90 and a levy of $5,232,902.94. Mm-hmm. Okay. I second it. Okay. Have we any discussion? No, we're all set. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. And aye. Very good. Uh, Russ, if you can, we'll sign it electronically. If not, we'll uh, get it signed first thing in the morning. Okay. All right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Good night. Good night. night. It's on the table here. Uh, Lee. Yes. So, yeah, Phil was asking about the shelving system. Yes. You know, with all the talk that's been brought up and Steve Dinklaker's uh, experience with Scanning and all, I'm really thinking that the money would be better spent there by doing a coordinated scanning project that could expand to all the departments in town. We would get many, many, many times the storage in our existing shelving in the vault uh, than we have now, and without having to re- you know reconstruct the floor and put in the rolling shelving and so forth. The shelving that we have is the actual units that we have are functionally strong and able to be used. And, you know, it's easy enough to um, to arrange things in such a way that you can find things easily on them. So if we go to a system of organized and pre-thought scanning, I think we get much more bang for the buck. Lori said that we have the equipment we need to do it. What we need to do, I guess, is come up with a uh, someone who can give us an estimate on what will be involved, perhaps two or three professional scanning corporations. We had one do some work years ago. And 
or if someone in town is qualified to do it with the equipment we have, we certainly need to have a good estimate, realistic estimate of the number of hours involved. And we would want to have a calendar on the project also so that there would be a completion date for different phases of it. That's my thoughts at the moment. And your your thoughts match pretty much what many other people were thinking. Yeah, it is a vault. It was built as such. It's fireproof. It's virtually anything proof. I think the rest of the building would fall on it and it would be fine. It stays comfortably heated from the a little bit. A little bit. It gets cool in there now because the old furnace is gone from the furnace room. And in the summer, we open the vault door when we're there in the office with the air conditioning on in order to keep the air in there dry and dehumidified. Um, but it's a great functional space. And it is the only one we have in town. And uh, Thank you know, the you, two ones over there. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Great. I'm happy to help. Uh, introduce you to Brian Cook, who's doing it now for the town of Leverett. Um, he's engaged in the project there. He's done with us for the last 12 years, uh, gotten rid of every document. We we don't don't have any real do physical documents anymore. We're able to do without documents, but I think it's the way to go. It would certainly, I think, be welcomed by the town that we're doing that. So that's I'm I'm heartily in favor. Lee, that's great. Yeah. Good. I'd like to talk with him someday when I can get back in town and we can look and see him, you know, make Ab notes and go over exactly what we do have to keep. Okay. Okay. We're getting we're getting a little behind in our meeting, so if if we can continue. Thanks very much, Lee. Okay, thank you. Goodbye, all. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, <clears throat> bye. So, meetings attended by select board members. So, Erica. None since last week. Phil. Where did Phil go? <laughs> well, I'll do mine. Um, so, we had a conservation commission meeting, very short. And today, I had a really wonderful meeting with FERCOG. And a whole bunch of people who from the town who are interested in the pollinator corridor project that we voted uh, some grant money to for FERCOG to work with people in Conway to to look at where possible po pollinator habitats might be and and uh, how they might get seeded and anyway it was a well attended meeting with a lot of great ideas I don't know if that's why Janet was on the meeting today she was there but. It was wonderful. My wife was also attending. She had some technical problems, I think, but she was there. She's very interested in that. Rua was there, yeah. She she uh, she had a bad internet connection. Well, I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> but I but she texted me and I read her comments, which were well received and much appreciated. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Janet. So, Phil, any meetings this week? Yeah, um, Tuesday was Frontier School Committee meeting because we had to revote the the track project. Because, um, but uh, and then Tuesday, I also I accepted Janet Shea's uh, the Open Space Trails Committee uh, invitation to speak to them about the carbon credit stuff that we're doing. Um, and uh, and Thursday was the uh, was the planning board meeting that I listened to. Oh, so. that's right. That was that was good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Any public comment? Yes. Okay. Janet. I have a public comment on the proposal to change the CPA bylaw regarding membership. Um and I don't know if somebody wants to explain that. So, Janet, that's on our agenda under other business. Okay. Very, so can, very soon. Yes. All right. So, can I? I can chip in then when you, you get sure there. Can. Thank you. Any other public comments? 
Well, seeing none, so let's go on to old business. Uh, so the first one, uh, Tom, do you want to talk about the, the uh, interim town administrator position? Today is the deadline for applications. Uh, we did get in one, one late application. The committee is going to be meeting on Thursday to interview uh, one a potential interim and two potential permanent town administrators. So we'll have uh, those recommendations um, for you next week, and it would probably be a good idea to see if you can uh, agree on a time to meet. It, you know, because they're they're interviews and they go long, and you probably want to have uh, several. It should probably be on a on a night other than one where you're doing regular business, unless you just want to have a, a really long Monday night, which is a, a possibility as well. Uh, but but I I think it would be possible to to interview anytime anytime Monday or after. And then and that would be a public meeting, and then you'd have uh, you know you you could deliberate and make your decision, uh, and then uh, a follow up for contract negotiations would be in executive session. So, Tom, do you think you could send out like um, a doodle poll or some way, you know, perhaps starting on Tuesday night next week to see when we all could have these interviews? Uh, yeah, if if anyone can say any any night that they could not meet now, that would be helpful. Uh, we'll have to look at our calendar things here. Um, Thursday, I think not, just because we have another. We're the interview. The um, search committee is meeting Thursday, three to I don't know five at least. I think. Well, this is next week, Erica. Yeah, no, that's oh, next on week, the eighth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so that's what we're talking. We're talking about the okay. sixth, seventh, eighth. Let me look at my calendar. Just as a heads up, as chair of the committee. We're looking at probably three interim candidates and three permanent candidates to submit to, unless the numbers have changed in the last few minutes, but that's what we're looking at right now, probably, to submit to you guys. So and, is it this coming Thursday, you're gonna be meeting to determine who the, that's on the 1st, April 1st? That's correct. And so after that, you could send us the names of your top two or three, whatever you're recommending. How many do you want? <laughs> the real question. Three is okay if you think all of them are, are good. Otherwise, you know. It, it's... Well, if you think the maximum number, it might be two. We still have a discussion going on before the meeting gets started with the interviews, final interviews. But we may have two or three for both interim and two or three for permanent by Thursday afternoon at the end of the meeting. Yeah, the only thing that I've said is I wouldn't want to have to interview more than three in a given night or in a given sit down. Um, but I, I'm, I'm OK with as many as you want to send to us. So. I'm thrilled you have three. So you yeah. know, then if you have three that you think all would be good, we'd love to talk to them. Do you also want to talk to the permanent uh, candidates? Eventually, but not now. Yeah, let's get through. Let's get through the interim first. So you've decided to have an interim, yeah. correct? Okay. All right. Just the last question I wanted to ask. <laughs> okay, Bob. So, so I, I'm good on Wednesday night. I, I don't know. That's the seventh. Uh, I, I think that's fine for me. Hey. How about you, Phil? That okay? Yeah. Okay, so let's plan on Wednesday then. Great. Uh, so the next item on our agenda is to talk about uh, just what Jana wanted to talk about the uh, whether you know whether or not and whether or not to have a warrant article or two to change the wording in the bylaw for how we appoint uh, community preservation committee members. And we talked about this a couple times. We talked about it last week. Yeah. We weren't able to come to a consensus. Um, and if we can't come to a consensus, I just assume we take it to the town and town meeting. Um, and Tom did send us a, a 
sort of a a wordy description of what the problem is and then some possible ways that we could that we could change it so but, that but, but bob is it, yeah. is this is the one that i'm the reason that we're not at a consensus <laughs> it is yeah yeah and I, that's okay I, i'm, no, I'm, not, no, I'm no. not in opposition to no you know what you know what this this actually has taken all you know the 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 idea that this goes on the town meeting warrant on a year when there's so many other bylaws and whatnot that are just going to be taking up everybody's bandwidth and attention and this is just an unneeded distraction and i don't um uh it's not it's you know i i want to get with the consensus on this one and uh uh yeah just drop the bylaw dr drop the the warrant article just go with the interpretation that uh, I believe Janet is here to advocate for as well, although I'm not sure. She could be here. She could, last week she could be here to advocate for greater uh, select board power in all things. So I'm not sure. But, she could, um, she could be. But, uh, I wrote to Dusty King last week because he had sent us a note sort of expressing unease about the fact that we were talking about it, but not actually telling us what it was that he actually favored so he, he wrote and i'm pretty sure he sent this letter to everybody that you know that he is in favor of individual boards themselves making the appointment not well, you know not that recommendation that's required by law so again, law, we're, we're, we're more than happy to hear your view although we just agreed with you in advance so you think, can still so I share know, i don't know what janet's going to tell us uh, I, I have not. Uh, I have not seen posted uh, any public information about these discussions and 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 uh, an opportunity to understand what the problem is. I'm glad Joe Strugowski is here because he and I worked for many years on the adoption of the CPA and then uh, the passage of the existing bylaw, which. We, I worked really hard with the Community Preservation Committee and the state lawyers and the language is tailored a little bit for us, not much. Uh, and they all say these committees um, designate their members. And so I can only imagine, I, I mean, I'm not sure what the issue is, but the so law- Janet, can I, can I tell you what states. the issue is? Yes. So, so it's, it starts off by saying the committees have appointing authority. And then when it talks about what each committee does, it says the committees designate their members. It doesn't say that they appoint their members. Okay. Um, so, it, you know, so well, the question is, do they designate to the select board who they would like the select board to appoint? Or do they appoint the member themselves? Okay, the way it's been interpreted and interpreted, I, I sampled... Um, about a dozen towns today looked at their bylaws and most of them are just like ours. The select boards appoint the two at-large members and the others members are designated by the respective committees. And that, you know, that's passed. It's, it's worked fine, except, and um, it, it's, that's the way it is in, I would say the majority of the municipalities. So your, your, your interpretation is that the committees not just designate, but they also appoint those members. Yes. That that appointment doesn't go to the board to be appointed. Right, right. And that's the way it's worked and has worked well and has been understood. And this is the language that came uh, uh, from the state law, which I pulled up today. And and yes, that and right. So yes. I, I'm happy leaving the language exactly like it is and not bringing this to town meeting at all. But it, but, and, and hopefully we can remember this conversation if it if questions about what how to interpret the bylaw come up again. But but it came up because because in Tom's mind it was confusing what the word designate means as opposed to the word appoint. And so, well, it wasn't just my mind. Okay. Well, well, it's never, you know, for all these years that we've had it, um, this issue has never come up before. 
and you know and didn't come up and has has been you know that bylaw was exactly approved by the state attorney general so um and like i said works works well in other communities i to surrender in advance bob i tried <laughs> that's okay so 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 my proposal is let's not bring it up in town meeting and leave the language exactly like it is i loved it phil when you started off your discussion last week saying this language has worked you know you know for quite a long time and um so a, a quick question so has this been holding up uh the last appointment the the uh from coming from the council on aging i, I think it has yes and so and so as no a of, no it has not so carolyn has been appointed carolyn as Fager. far as i know and, and the select board appointed her just in case there was any further confusion. Yeah, I mean, I, I suggested to Tom before that, you know, you want to ratify it so it's on your records, you know, that's fine. Um, no, but, but I just no she's not, also been sworn in. Good, they don't need to ratify her. Because that's, the that's Community adding an extra Preservation step. Committee has, been, has not been able to meet. And we have, you all have uh, uh, submitted and Joe submitted it, uh, in consult with Tom and us working on the river mitigation, flooding, um, a, a proposal for CPA funding that they have to, even though you've delayed town meeting, they still have to meet and act and consider and so forth. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if Dusty's aware of your appointment. I just got an email from him at five o'clock, and he said they're waiting for one more appointment before they can act. That may be Donald Jarelliman. Uh Carolyn Thayer's already been sworn in. Sounds like they were missing one member before they could schedule a meeting. Well, Malcolm Malcolm supposedly resigned and, and they may not have a member from the historic commission. No, Malcolm just resigned as chairman. He still wants to be the member from the historical commission. I see. So I mean they can meet they're authorized for seven members. If only six are appointed, they can still meet. So Tom, I think we've done our work on this and we can go on. And, uh, and we've you know, spent <coughs> quite a long time and it's been interesting trying to decide how to, how to write laws here. Um, and do you, Tom, would you notify Dusty? As, I think he's acting as chair, is that right? Of the CPC? That, that he yes, should, he should seek the last appointment if there's one missing from whichever committee it is. But you know, we're we're still going by the, our understanding of the language that the committees make the appointment. They designate and they appoint. Okay. I'm thrilled. I'm just as glad that we don't try to bring this up and explain it at a town meeting. So <laughs> wonderful. Janet, are you good? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good. Um, so new business. So now we're on uh, Alan. You guys have a quorum. Can we do our joint meeting with the uh, with the finance committee? Yes, we do. We have three people. Steve, Roy, and I are here. I don't see uh, Sophia yet. Uh, I'm one. Was I supposed to speak? So okay. Oh, you're. Um, well, we we had you uh, to start speaking once we once we formed the joint meeting with the finance committee. Oh, okay. And you you can speak right away. Now now we're on budgets, and here's the finance committee. Okay. I don't I don't know if this is a budget item, uh, but I received a notice from uh, the contractor that we used for the sewer project that uh, there was an MMA Bolton American Rescue Plan uh, memo out that says Conway is going to receive, I believe, $548,000. I believe that's COVID money. Um, and I'm wondering if I can ask to have that earmarked for the downtown sewer project, which probably none of you are familiar with. Um, um, back a number of years ago, we tried to 
change our bylaws, and we were told um, from the standpoint of economic development that nothing would ever happen in Conway unless we had a sewer system. So we've been working on that for, I, sent, I think, since 2014 or 2015. We have a plan, but we have no money. The plan involves about a million and a half dollars. Uh, it involves putting in a collection system on River Street and Main Street and running it down to the South Park for a um, subsurface disposal system. And we're looking for money. I've, I did try the uh, Mass Works a couple of years ago. We got refused. We've looked at uh, RCAP and uh, NRCS, and we've explored many options. And we're really stuck on the financing part. So I was wondering if that money could be earmarked. I would then apply to uh, Mass Works again, or the whatever the new name is, the single source funding, and see if we could get another million dollars to move this project ahead. Why do you why do you think that we could we could spend this money, the COVID money? It's for COVID related expenses. Is that it's, a he's right? You can you can uh, do it. I'm thrilled, but yeah. According to uh, the information I received from the tie and bond, it can be used for infrastructure, for sewer and water projects. Don't next ask paragraph. Me. The next paragraph says you can also make direct grants to your to residents and to businesses. Um, so those those that have read both those paragraphs are then going to be you know asked to give it to the someone else. Um, uh, I mean, you know, the, 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 Joe, Joe, I, you know, the, 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 um, this is going to cover, I guess, like three years of COVID, uh, expenses for the town more or less and impacts to residents and whatever. I, um, um, I don't know about all of it. All of it is a kind of a big ask, I think. I don't, I don't know how others feel, but, uh, I, um, and I, I, like the older history is that this is the town that turned down hundred percent paid for water treatment plant in late seventies, early eighties. I forget. Um, probably if I'm not familiar with it, but it was probably when the clean water act went in. Yeah. Yeah. When Asheville got theirs. And, I think, uh, I think, I think the town decided to go with leaf fields and septic systems. You know? So, Joe, you think if we have five hundred thousand dollars to put towards this project, that it increases our MassWorks grant probability? Uh, that's that's my understanding. Yes. Well, we need a million and a half dollars. We have to get it somewhere. Yeah. Um, uh, can I pipe in briefly? I promise, brief. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've been part of the town and hearing proposals of what Conway needs for many, many years. And one of them is to be a little more business friendly and to have um, a little business in the center of the town, a little revitalization. And it seems to me that the lack of septic for the downtown is one of the big impediments for us to try to lure businesses here, but be careful, nobody can go to the bathroom. Um, or even tourist dollars, the bikers who come in, uh, what are they supposed to do? Where are they supposed to go? And, and, and because these septic systems are, are too close to the river, many of them have to be replaced and pumped out continually. So we're also very happy, proud of our environment and the natural resources in the river. And uh, you know, unfortunately, the septic is is for those downtowns is critical. Thank you. The, the pushback that I've gotten is the people in, outside the center of town say, well, who's going to replace my leach field? And so I, I think this doesn't work unless we can get a major portion of the capital cost covered through through grants or, you know, I, I we did look at, you know, doing a loan. Two, two or three percent loan, but I think even that would not be tolerated by the town on the tax rate. It's it's just too steep a hill to climb, I think. And so I think anything we can do to get, you know, free money or grant money, if you will, 
uh, is probably the only way we can pull this off. So what do you think we could get for money? I mean, this is 500,000. Do you think MassWorks would be another 500,000? And then we would well, I, borrow I the was, rest? I was working on their, uh, what is it, letter of intent. There's a, there's a pre-step you can take. And I was going to ask for the whole million and a half. But then this opportunity came up. That, and I'm not necessarily asking for all of it. Tom said you had maybe one or two small projects. But I guess if some portion of it, could be designated for the sewer. I, I might be able to reduce my request for the mass works or whatever group they send me to. Yeah, I was I was I specifically mentioned some potential broadband build out and infrastructure between town hall and town office and expansion uh, capacity for uh, overflow town meetings. I would just like to uh, pipe in here. Um, I, for one, know Joe has been working on this for a very, very long time. And I think we should all be grateful for that because I think it's uh, it's only a matter of time uh, for us to, uh, and maybe the technology improves uh, as, as we go along. So so here's, here's a thought. Um, is there a way to... Uh, to stay, can we put this money or the equivalent, I mean, in stabilization for this uh, to, because who knows, maybe, maybe there's going to be money part of the, uh, the 1.9 trillion that's uh, making its way into the economy. Um, and so maybe there'll be something there. I mean, I, I don't know, but, or, or excuse me, not the 1.9 trillion, the, uh, the infrastructure sp uh, spending that's supposed to happen. Um, and if that ever comes to pass, maybe there'll be some money there. And uh, so I guess my suggestion is, can we put this, can we put these funds in stabilization or put different half million dollars in stabilization and use these funds for something else? Does that make any sense? It works for me if it worked for you. <laughs> Uh, well, Tom listen, has I, proposed that, that we might want to use some of that money for a broadband project, um, but we, we do have pretty much enough money that we have that we have not spent that we have in a, that Jan has in an account earmarked for for broadband that we've gotten from Comcast over the last ten years, and and that's I believe we have enough money to to pay for that project. Without this, without this money, we, you know, that, that if we can keep that money in that account and find the money somewhere else, that would be fine. But I don't think we need it. I do think we need septic. Well, and I, and I, I would, I would, I don't think we can put it in stabilization. I think we have to spend it on infrastructure. And there's also a time uh, requirement. I think, I think we have to spend it by 2024. I think you're right. I think it's a two or three year program. Okay, well, that would still give us a year, year and a half, you know, to even start thinking about spending it. You know, I mean, it's, I, I don't know how, I don't know how extensive the plans and things that you have, Joe, and how, how much is going to need to be updated, you know, before, before such a project would start. But listen, you know, uh, if you remember the objection, not only do people on the, uh, on the exurbs uh, of town, uh, say, well, who's going to help me with my failed system? But there's also the issue of um, getting people to sign up and, uh, and you know, getting, if, if you're servicing, I don't know what it was, 300 uh, homes, does that number sound right? No, it's, it's more like 30 to 50. 30 to 50 homes. Just a small, well, small system. Right. That's it, huh? Just 30 but to 50 I, But homes. I'd be one of them. I know, and, and Joe isn't even one of them, so we really got to give him kudos for this one. <laughs> Most so, of us are not one of them. Right, and I'm not one of them for sure. Yeah. Well. Um, and you're still in favor of it, and so am I. So. Yeah, of course. So, But the, the whole deal is, um, so how, much, how many of those uh, 30 to 40 or 50, how, how many of those folks have, have committed to anything, or do we know? I, I don't think we know at this point. Mm -hmm. um, 
we we haven't done a presentation in the last three or four years yeah. to bring well, people up to speed because of the financing issue. Um, and that Joe, does change the numbers significantly. You must be sick of this, Joe. But Joe, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get this off my plate so I can I completely retire. <laughs> Joe, you were expecting the, the people that, that joined up to pay a lot of money to fund this thing. Yeah, un unfortunately, we were trying also as part of this funding to um, do an income survey in the center village. We were not able to complete it. We couldn't get people to participate. <laughs> but I suspect the additional problem is we have a lot of lower income people on Main Street. Hey, now. Uh, and so I think that makes it more difficult for the existing people to participate, if you will. Okay, so getting back to this this particular meeting, and the, I mean, what's the most that can come out of this meeting here regarding this regarding this uh, regarding any possibility of um, this COVID money? I I like the idea of making the Mass Works application look stronger on paper. Um, and and I think I like that a lot. I think I like that better than sticking hundreds of thousands more into stabilization at this point. Um, I, I agree with Phil. If, if, if our application could say that we have half a million dollars earmarked for the project, I would think that would help us in getting the other million that we need. Hmm. So I'm going to make a motion that we earmark 500,000 of the, of the COVID funds for Joe's project for, for the, for the river rats project, how do you want to state this? For the, <laughs> no, for the sewer rats, <laughs> sewer rats for the sewer. system for town, center of town. And what does that leave if we earmark five hundred thousand? Was it forty? Forty-eight thousand 48, left. If those numbers are correct, yeah, it's it's five forty-eight. You, you might you might want to dollars. just. You, you might want to support it in principle at this point. We, we don't really know, um, you know, how long it's going to take and what's going to be necessary over the summer or maybe even into the fall. Uh, we may be avoiding another surge. We may not. Um, theoretically, the vaccines are all on their way. Um, but I'm, I'm just thinking that, that agreeing with it in principle at this point would probably be a good thing. And, and it would be good to have the uh, finance committee weigh in on this, too. So what's the meaning of an earmark? Is that an, does that mean in principle? No, that means you're deciding right now to give that amount of money to this project. And, and I think it's a good, a good starting place to say, yeah, that, that's what we intend to do. Um, I'm just worried about your boxing yourselves in at this point. You know, if you needed another couple of bucks. Give give me the strongest statement you can that I can put in my application. Yeah. Whether it's an earmark or a statement of intention or whatever, however you want to word it. Yeah, well, I'm optimistic. A statement of intention that. is good. And we can make it contingent on receiving the Mass Works grant if you want. You know, but, yeah, uh, yeah. If we don't get that money, then you can have the half a million back. You earmark it for something else. Yeah. Because I may have to get a letter from you to include in the application package. Yeah, I'm happy to work on that. You said you're understanding the specific language said that it's individuals could apply for this money themselves too, right? That's your understanding? You asking me or Tom or Phil seems to know. No, so the, the town could create um, uh, programs to give this money to individuals or to businesses um, that are impacted in some way by COVID economically or any other way. Instead of us so, just deciding what we're gonna spend the lump sum on. Yes. I guess that's my only concern. A, a large portion of the money, not a large, but a portion of the money 
goes to replacing your existing septic tank, you need a tank that has a pump chamber in it for this project. So I think there are only three or four of those in town. So in this cost is included replacing everybody's septic tank with, you know, it's a divided septic tank that has a septic sewage on one side and a pump on the other side. I don't know, we were planning to keep it within the scope of the project, but I guess you could pay the individuals directly to, or finance their tank, if you will. Our, our proposal, I guess, is to um, take the effluent from your house where the pipe leaves your house and then the town would have an easement to put a tank on your property. And then we're just taking the uh, effluent water. There's actually a filter in your tank so that only the liquid can get out and the liquid goes to the leaching field. And then every, they claim with these new systems, you only have to pump the tank every seven to 10 years. And they actually, as part of it, they monitor the um, amount of sludge that's in the bottom. And so they don't, they don't just pump it every three years, they pump it when it's required, but they claim it's seven to 10 year cycle. So it reduces your sludge cost. One of my one of my concerns with all of this is apparently there's only one place in Massachusetts where sludge can currently be processed, and Deerfield and our surrounding towns are all spending horrendous amounts of money getting their sludge processed. But I guess I have to be optimistic and hope they're going to solve that problem. <coughs> I mean, it's a problem for the homeowners now, and they pay a lot more because they'll be pumping it more frequently. Uh, on their existing system. So if it really is seven to 10 years, they, their pumping cycle would go down. Whatever the cost is, it would be less. You know? I think we don't have a future for downtown if the way current, the wells and the septic systems are so close to each other. Well, you know, as you know, the new problem is these forever chemicals. And if they get in the water supply, then we'll need a water supply and a sewage treatment system. Yeah. So you mean the PFAS chemical? PFAS, yes. Yeah. PFAS, I think they call it, which are showing up in places I never would have imagined. Yeah, they're in everything. What I also always try to remind people is all of us that live along Route 116 really could just live our lives just fine without a highway department or a highway garage or anything because the state does all does of the road. And um, so all of these expenses that the highway garages, highway equipment, another $180,000 borrowing for the uh, mile of road, all these things that those of us subsidize for everybody else in town. Um, so this is, this is sort of, and I've been trying to make that very public so that, um, you know, but a lot of the, the opposition to this in the past was people saying, you know, my my sense of community ends at my own driveway. You don't you, <laughs> nobody's coming to fix. Nobody's coming in to fix my septic. Da, 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 da. Fortunately, so, when Andrea Lamas had to commute to Buckland every day, she had to drive over that section of road, well, I, you know, from the center of town. I, I, I know. I know. Well, I, Bill, I'm, I, making a, Bill. I'm making a point here, Bob. I'm making a point. <laughs> But listen, Phil, I, I share, Phil, I share your sentiments. That's all the more reason why everybody in town should pay for this, because the people in the center of town aren't getting their fair share. Yeah. But yeah. I need to bring that up because then it raises the whole issue of paying for schools. So I, well, but yeah. uh, wasn't the plan, original plan to have the uh, the subscribers that they, that it's not that they get this for free; they've got to pay something. Yes, they would, no, they will pay an operating cost for sure. And okay, if, so but if we but if we can deal for a, if we can pr uh, separately fund the capital cost, they they would obviously have to deal with the operational cost. And they're paying that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean to, for their own? For their yeah, own they're, they're they're paying to pump their septic system. Having it pumped out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Bob Baker said he has to pump it out many times a year. Yes, he does. Yeah. Well, here's an interesting thought. I mean, I, I would think that uh, a town sewer ultimately increases the value of all those properties where it doesn't really increase the value of the rest of the town's properties. 
So that's always a possibility. If we, if we had to cost some money, you could, you could put a, you know, some kind of lien on the, um, you know, this would have to, you know, so we're, we're an interest free thing so that when the house sells or something, the town gets paid back. If we needed to do that for some of the money, it's just a thought. It's not, I'm not, I, I, it, you know, it's not fully flushed out, but it did occur to me that, um, you know, not having to think or deal with the septic system is add something to the town, you know, to the uh, value of a house. And you might even say that about a public water supply, but that could be debatable as well. But we've so. spent the last year behaving ourselves very well with hardly a COVID case in Conway, you know, ever. <laughs> and, and, and then I'm going to believe that's going to continue. Fortunately, we can hear something. We can really spend something of great value to the town. I don't disagree. <laughs> so do, I, do I have any money or do I not? <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm going to try my motion again to make a motion that we earmark 500,000 of this COVID money contingent upon for, for I mean, the sewer ear, ear market for the purposes of the grant contingent upon the awarding of the grant yeah um from mass works in excess of a million dollars and it's american rescue plan act money great that's not mention covid american rescue act so any more discussion about it we're all good i see people nodding i'm good can i get a second Oh, Phil is given a second, so I'm going to vote aye. I assume Phil's aye. nodding his head aye. That's aye. So we're unanimous, Joe. Okay, very good. So, thank, so, thank you very much. So Tom's going to write you a letter, or are you going to propose one to him? Uh, we'll work it out. The details. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll work it out. I'll have it on, on your agenda for Monday to sign. Okay, so we'll we'll sign it next Monday. That's soon enough, Joe. I think so, yeah. I have to get the application in, in April, I believe. Great. Thank you very much. Have Enjoy the yeah, rest okay. of your evening. Thank you. Spend a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alan, back back to our operating budgets. Um, oh. So, so Tom, do you want to walk us through what these? The, you sent us a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of budgets. There we go. These are the ones that were too big for us to print out. So we were going to do the rest of the uh, Article Two down the left side. These were all budgets that we talked about a couple months ago. The answer is yes. So items uh, 114 through uh, 162, three, actually 161, I'm sorry. And then uh, including the Conway Grammar School budget and the regional and the technical schools, and also the 540 series. I have a suggestion uh, for everyone, especially maybe for you, Tom Hutchinson, and that is with regard to the uh, select selectmen, the uh, increase of 5,600, you might want to break out to uh, like a separate uh, line item in the budget, which shows that you're actually going to capitalize, uh, put a line item, rather a $3,100 uh, select board discretionary, because otherwise it'll go to town meeting seeming as though the select board is giving themselves a fifty-six hundred dollar raise. I just it would might stave off a lot of uh, unneeded comment at town meeting. Just a suggestion. I, I kind of thought the same thing. I, you know, if I, I said if we're gonna if it's gonna look like we're getting a five thousand dollar raise, then we should get a five thousand dollar raise. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like that idea too. So where else could we? Put that money. Uh, 
Well, it's going to look bad even if you do that, because the majority of the raise there is for your stipends, but it's restoring your previous stipends. I, I think the, the, um, the key there is, you know, people are going to have to have to um, it, it, it's just going to have to say you're, you're restoring it to what it was two years ago. Because because it is a huge raise compared to next last year, this current year. There, there, there's no way around that. They'll, they'll they'll see that raise anyway. All right. Oh well, mm-hmm. suck it up, Buttercup. Yeah. So our our, our normal stipends are fifty four hundred dollars each. No, no, for three, all three of them. Eighteen hundred each. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, I, I guess uh, of the, of these budget um, uh, categories, the to the, I mean the the town clerk and the assessors were the ones that put in salary numbers besides the overall salary recommendations. Is that right? Yes, the town clerk would like a an actual raise, and the assessors are putting in money for uh, a they're putting in extra money for a trainee. So I get my my question about that was that, um, you know, I, I understand it better with the town clerk. And so the I remember the raise request was for nine percent. And then the, and then there's the potential for a fiscal 2021 adjustment upwards, as well as a 2022 adjustment upwards so that potentially we could be talking about a 14 percent raise more or less. Um, unless we do something about it, right? I'm... Um, what, I, what I'm looking at uh, has a single figure for the town clerk throughout the different um, possibilities for for retroactive raises. Generally, people who get raises do not participate in the cost of living increases. So this is showing the salary going from thirty four five thirteen to thirty seven five hundred. Yes, with no change due to any um, across the board raise. A whole lot of departments that have no change with across the board raise rate. Okay. The ones in blue are the salary ones that have changes. That have okay. already put in their salary. Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. I get it. So, a, so a five percent raise on top of the thirty-seven fifty would be what? Uh, Twelve hundred. That's not being proposed. Right. The it's proposal not. is to raise the the salary to thirty-seven five hundred. And, and, and but that's about Board. double what it would be if it were the two percent plus two percent. Yes, it is a raise. I understand. Yeah. Uh, just shy of three thousand dollars.
No, you know, I, I understand that, I guess. That, that, you know, this is sort of brought to us by our friends from FERCOG and their annual salary, countywide salary survey. Um, and, you know, it it is true. It is true that she... That currently our, our that our town clerk position is the third low third or fourth lowest funded lowest paid position in the county. But it's also true that of the towns that are less than twenty five hundred in population, we're right in the middle of the pack before the race. But um, but still. Well, I don't have a problem with this one. I am wondering where we can bury the the add, the money we're adding back in for the select board, the, the select board uh, funding. Well, I don't think we should bury it. I mean, if if that's what we're proposing, I think we should yeah. we should own it. <laughs> okay. No, Barry was the wrong word. Uh, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. All right. I'm, I'm okay with the proposal with the proposal to okay these. Yeah, me too. I can't speak from others, but for myself, or for the. Uh, 114 through uh, 161 series. I mean, I'm, I have no other major uh, observation suggestions or anything. I just think it would be a good idea to say that for the select board uh, salary that the uh, 3000 will be for discretionary projects. It's not, in other words, it's not a, a big increase in quote unquote in the stipend. What is that actual 3000 for? If it's fifty four hundred, as Bob says, yeah, well, it's twenty nine hundred plus fifty fifty six hundred, eighteen hundred per per select board member is fifty four hundred, so it's an increase of five, three thousand dollars. I thought Tom said that was if we wanted to undertake a um, like if we wanted to pay for an appraisal for a piece of property. Yeah, so it's like discretionary money. As yeah. long as it's not, you can't you can't turn around and say, well, we bought ourselves a. Uh, Another stipend increase because you know we didn't use the money for any other projects or anything. Right. Well, this this gets explained in the uh, in the budget narrative, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's money we're probably not going to spend. Yeah, it's just money that we used to have to try to find right. elsewhere when we needed it. Right. right. Well, if we have a pre-meeting this year for the uh, budget discussion, we might want to bring that up just because it's not a huge amount. Really, I'm not going to spend any more time on it because in the scheme of things, it's. It's not even material to the budget, but they might. I don't want it to become a pet peeve of somebody and end up holding a town meeting. <laughs> you can hear it now. Yeah. But why isn't why why isn't there like a selectman discretionary fund one twenty three account number one twenty three that has three thousand dollars in it? You have your store the fifty four hundred. It was from before, or whatever it is that we're storing before. Twenty. Uh, there, there are multiple sub accounts under each one of these main headings, and those are covered in the budget document that that I put out. Uh, it should be coming out in in two or three weeks. Um, uh, th this is this is a a pre of that for town meeting, and that is that is of course public information that everybody has access to. It, it, it goes up on the web, all that sort of thing. Um, in general, uh, it's better for town meeting to vote overall line items in case things have to be moved between accounts. Good point. Uh, or between sub accounts, rather. I think we'll just have to talk, say it in town meeting, and, and I just see it. A lot of discussion going on at this point. The selectmen are increasing their own salaries. That's what's happening, and people get upset. And they got to explain it and so forth. You don't have anything broken out unless you do it in the budget that you're submitting. It's more detailed. There'll be something like a sub account of one twenty two. That has the additional three thousand dollars in it. 
Is that what you're saying, Tom? Yes. Okay. Well, if, if it explains itself, I think then's fine. Then restoring the 5,400 is good. That's what you're doing. Okay. That was well, I don't Are you going to make a motion? Well, I make a motion for well, the, uh, through one. And again, both the Finance Committee and Select Board have to make these motions. The, these are two different public bodies here. Right. Thank yeah, you. Understood. Right. So well, I, 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 I was going to vote on the 114 through the 161 series as a, a group. Uh, Steve and Roy, uh, what do you think? I'm, I'm good with it. How about you, Roy? Yeah, I'm fine. Do we need a motion? A All second? right. So I make a motion that, as presented in the 324-21 draft, that we approve the Article 2 items as presented. Second. Anyone care to make a motion? I mean, no. anyone care to second, rather? I second it. Yes. Second or third. <laughs> All right. All right. Aye. All those in favor, aye. Right. Second. Aye. Three zero. Oh. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Roy. So I'm going to make a motion that the select board also uh, uh, approves 114 through 161. Uh, I'll second that. Second, third, yes. Third. Okay. So we're <laughs> unanimous also. Thank you. Okay. Were there more below there? What about what about 162 and three and uh, 170? I thought we. You know, I I thought we voted on that last week, but uh, we can go over it again. I mean, with the registrar's increase, really 6,000 of it is because of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, scanning system for the voting. I mean, arguably it could be a capital budget item, but whatever. Like, no, remember the training? Remember the training? It was the training that put it over the 5,000? Yeah, it remember was like uh, 4,900, yeah. and then it was like another 1,000 for training. So it squeaked by. So really, the only increase for is in terms of salary and all that is two hundred dollars to uh, pay the uh, town vote counters. I don't know challengers. I don't know what seven dollars an hour or whatever we get paid. I'm okay with that. As we already discussed. But if you want to vote, Tom Hutchinson, you asking us to uh, to vote in it again? I'll be happy to do so if you need. Yeah, I think we only did public works and public safety last time. Okay, so but we did, we did hear about. <laughs> Okay, so uh, then we're looking at the 162.3 and the 170 series, those two, correct? The 170 is almost flat. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and also 190, the personnel committee, in case they need to buy some paper or something. <laughs> okay. <Zero dollars. laughs> All right. So, uh, Roy and uh, Steve, are you, are you okay to vote with that now? Do you, you have any, any more questions? Yes. I'm, I'm good with it. Okay, okay. Give us a motion. All right, so I make a motion that we approve the 170 series, 190, and 190 and, uh, as, as uh, presented. And uh, anyone and care to second the motion? 162 and 163. And then one, and 162, 163. Thank you, Bob. Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so it carries uh, 3 0 in favor. Sounded unanimous. So I'm going to, for the select board, I'm going to make a motion. We uh, support 162 and 163, 170 and 190 series. I'll second that. Third, yes. I vote aye. So we're unanimous yes. also. Uh, just a note, if sure. I may, since Steve mentioned it, uh, the reason to put a dollar in an account is so that town meeting approves some expense for that account. So in case there is an expense, then they can go into deficit and it can be restored at the end of the year uh, through a couple of different means um, if necessary, rather than not authorizing any expense in an account, which means that no money can be spent for anything um, under that purpose. So that, that's the reason to leave a dollar in the account. Okay. So that's for the personnel committee. Right. Yeah, yeah and th th there's also that for town audits. Yeah. And last week, I think we did the uh, building maintenance and building maintenance wages uh, under, uh, as part of Ron's. And that's correct, yes. Yeah, so I, I've just highlighted the, uh, the rest of general government. 
and uh, health and human services, except for education, for now. Have we voted on any of them yet? Just, just Ron? Right. So, so we need to vote on what's highlighted and then the schools. I'll mention that the newsletter committee may well go into deficit, but five thousand dollars was the was the amount that we had originally agreed on. So we're going to see how much over that they go. It could be one or two thousand dollars, but that's that's the order that we're talking about now. So um, I, I don't know that it's necessary to change it at this point. So other than that, it's pretty flat. Yeah, it, it might be wise to put another $1,000 into it now just to make it easier later. Into the newsletter? Yeah. Yeah. So it won't have much impact. I mean, uh, I haven't checked the budget from Michael Charla, but I mean, it looks as though we're, we're going to spend the full 5000 in, in this year. So it, Certainly the costs won't go down, so it makes sense to increase it by a thousand. Gotta start selling some ads in that thing. Yeah. They have. I know, but they're starting it's starting. They're starting. It's starting. So any, I, I that last column should the increase should be a thousand dollars then, not six thousand. Oh. Right. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> the hazards of easy editing. Yeah. And the total the total would also change, right? At uh, the bottom. I trust that's automatic. I don't think so. No. Yes, it is automatic, and it did change. Is column G, is that 2021? Is that what that is? Yeah. No, uh, it's, it's 2022 with no raises. Okay. So, so it's, it's the, the base budget for next year. So it actually is 6,000 more than what we spent in 2021. Is that correct? Is that right? Didn't we already? Letter, it's one thousand more. That's what I. Yeah, five, I think we put five thousand yes. in last year. Yeah. Column F should well, I think five thousand in. It's it's all coming out of the town administration budget at this point. It's not a separate line item. This is the first time it's a separate line item. Okay. Bob, you got to hit enter or something to get uh, the cell there to take the formula. On the the, the cell you're on there. Yeah, just get just click out of it. There you go. Okay. Okay. I, I moved to I was just showing people it was a formula. I got you. So, it was five twelve through nine hundred. Is that right what we're approving? Motion to approve all of these. Oh, the schools too? Yeah, to nine hundred. I mo moved that we approve those uh, budget items. Well, hold on. I have some discussion. The debt service. Uh, hold on, Steve. It's for Tom Hunter. The debt service. Uh, does that include what Jan had worked up if we were to borrow money to improve that stretch of Shelburne Falls Road? I, I don't think so. I will, I will have to check on that. Um, but I don't believe so, because uh, if we don't borrow that money before July 1st, it doesn't show up in FY22. So I'm going to say, no, it does not include that. And if we wait until July 1st to borrow, then it will. Um, I will check with uh, Ron and Jan about when um, 
when we intend to borrow for that and uh, will adjust uh, as necessary. Thanks. You know, that what the U.S. forwarded uh, to us this afternoon from Jan Warner, the date in the upper left corner is from November 18th of 2019, and it has debt service starting in uh, 2021. So you know, I think that if we were to borrow money, it wouldn't impact the uh, budget until uh, fiscal year 23, I think. It, yeah, it depends if we borrow before or after July 1st. Okay. All right. So we'll assume that it doesn't include it. So I, I, uh, I guess being the chair, I should make the motion actually to uh, yep. approve the 540 series through 900. And uh, uh, that would uh, 512? 512 yeah, to 900. Yeah, yeah. 512 and in the, in the 540 series up through 540, uh, 900, i.e. the employee costs. So uh, I make a motion that we approve the uh, budget uh, with the $1,000 increase for the town newsletter. Uh, anyone care to second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Thank you. I vote aye. So 3 0 in favor is. Thank you. So for the select board, I'll make the same motion uh, 512 through 900. Do we approve them? A second. Here Third. a second. I say yes. aye. Eric. Yes. So yes. we're unanimous also. Just the schools to go. So question of uh, the schools committee uh, representative, that's uh, um, <laughs> Phil? Phil here, yeah. Phil, are you, would you comment on that seventy-six thousand just going up? That's the that's what it was that it's decided by the schools they needed, and there's no change to that. Is that right? Yeah, I mean that was, um, like I I, I think one of the things that you, that was you could really appreciate from that is that how many moving parts there are to all that. And, um, yes. Uh, and, and, you know, they, the decision was made to allocate fund, uh, certain, you know, school choice to allocate, you know, uh, uh, the ESSER funds, the, this, that, and, and, the, and the decision to, um, to, to hire the teacher interventionist. Um, so that's, that's a, 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 a full-time professional position and, um, you know, I think they're really fortunate to be able to do that. It's there's all kinds of really good data that says that that's the that's like the most effective thing you can do to bridge the gap between where they would have been if it was a normal year and where they're all at now. And um, it's these specially trained people with social work background, but digital background and they can, um, uh, you know, whatever it's 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 a way to to to, to catch up. And so it looks like it's not going to be a long term, you know, but maybe two, three years. I don't know. But um, but yeah, so that's why. That's so this why. is perfectly understandable to the town folks at town meeting. This is half of our increase of the 141. You, you know, it's it's still it's still overall a three um, uh, percent in, increase from the grammar school. Right. I think it's three point seven nine. I think that's what Shelley put Seven nine. Yeah. And um, you know, we're we're two hundred and fifty years, and we've never voted against our own grammar school's budget. So, um, and and we've been presented with some double with with many years of double digit increases. So, um, in the past. So, I think we're. Yeah. So yeah. Shelley. Shelly will be there to explain the oh, and, and the principal and all that. And that's, oh, yeah. you know, it, oh, absolutely. it's, 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 it's always a terrifying thing for the schools because you can't do, you can't do budgeteering uh, uh, on the floor of town meeting. Your stuff is so complex and dynamic that you can't deal with amendments from the floor of town meeting. But um, 
but you do have to be able to really explain and believe in what you're asking for and believe that it's worth asking for it and understand that it's, you know, you're privileged to ask for it. So Should this I'm 30, big, be something we can charge to the COVID funding for the next two or three years? Uh, yeah, potentially. The other thing is that the school itself is getting COVID, uh, extra COVID funding as well yeah. through that. Extra two, right? No, the, the, uh, the, yeah, we got, we got SR2 funding, the schools did, and the, the, uh, the, whatever the Biden one is, I forget the name, but Americans for rah, rah, rah. rah. Yeah, Americans so for budget rah, 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 that. Flat. Right? What? This budget already um, Bob? that. No, 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 no. The, the, yeah, the, brand, the brand new money that's in the pipeline. Um, right now that I don't even know if the schools have a, 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 a accurate idea of exactly to the penny what they'll be getting. But, um, but I, I think, I th you know, I think that there's a pot potential for funding that next year through that. If, if, if the numbers are anything, what I think they're going to be, then they'll be. I think of the, uh, the 79,000, approximately $400 increase, uh, Phil and everyone is that. 55,000 represented by the interventionist position, 10,000 for technology, and pretty much the remainder is uh, scheduled uh, negotiated contract salary increases for the teachers and instructional assistants. And, and I mean, generally too, I think the residents in the town, they, they look at Frontier and Conway Grammar School as, as a co cohesive unit in terms of the impact it has on their tax rate. And so when one goes down a lot or when the increase is below 1%, like Frontiers is, um, that makes the other one that's above 3%, it makes that pill a little bit easier to swallow, I think. So, Phil, I have a question because you're part of the uh, Frontier Regional School Committee, right? Or you, right, you're active, you attend a lot of the meetings. Are but, the Sunderland, Deerfield, and uh, Waitley's uh, schools also creating an interventionist position, do you know? Um, they all uh, tried. They all wanted it, and I I don't know if any of them got it. Oh, I just make I, mention because you know we have like a third of our students now coming from out of town, which uh, I guess you can say is a feather in our cap, but also it, uh, you know I don't know what the school committee stance is. Is there any uh, any percentage limit of uh, school choice? I mean, obviously. There's not a lot legally we can do school choice to school choice, but I, I've never, that yeah, seems I mean, to be the I, highest we, number ever. <laughs> we, we do talk about that. You know, the, the thing about all that is that it, it has to be such that we're not, it, it can't, you know, it, it can't be a financially self-defeating proposition Yeah. because you're, you're only reimbursed $5,000 per student that you get through that. But we yeah. have one teacher per grade. So um, if, if there's only 10 kids in that grade, having an extra five kids isn't going to increase our costs. Um, so that's, and we have to be really careful that we're not in a position where it's going to increase our costs far more than yeah. the revenue that you get. Well, I know that Principal so, Gordon had talked about having additional capacity. You know, what Shelly Parita had shared was that it's going to cost $21,666 per student based on the DESI calculation to educate so, I mean, we're relying. I think when uh, students come in for the WINGS program, we get special uh, extra money for that, right? For student, correct? Yeah, we do. But the other thing, that number was based on that October 1st snapshot when absenteeism was at its highest and there was the uh, decisions were made by parents to, to take kids out of school early on that, yeah. um, that were then put back in so that the numbers... That same average right now, I believe, would be under twenty thousand. Yeah, I think that uh, there's like a hundred. What well, in on the next not exactly? What I think it was something like one hundred forty-one uh, students might be at the uh, Conway Grammar School, kindergarten through sixth, including in town and out of town. Yeah, the uh, thought here would be is that the average. I mean, we're relying a lot on the. We're kind of leveraging a lot in that. You know. It, the average uh, home price in, in Conway is about three hundred thousand at, at what eighteen dollars ninety cents a thousand. I mean we're relying, and then we get of course we get chapter seventy money, but the school choice money also comes in, and uh, 
In other words, we're kind of leveraging up a lot on uh, getting at it. We're building our model on having a fairly high percentage of students come from out of town, which I guess you could say is a feather in our cap because we're, we're running a, uh, a level one school. And I think we're getting a lot of students from Montague and Greenfield, which unfortunately don't have that, that ranking by the uh, DESE. So I don't know, just, just, some, just something to keep an eye on. I mean, I mean, we want a Cadillac program, but uh, we're kind of marrying ourselves to a budget which uh, does rely on a lot of out-of-town reliance for enrollment. Yeah, you know what, though? It brings, it, it's um, those things that we're really good at that, 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 that this money supports. Like, we're really good at test taking our school. All yeah. of these standardized tests that are rightfully pilloried, um, we're really good at them. And that manifests in like Zillow and all those websites for that people look at when they're buying those first time starter homes and they have a, they have a couple of youngins. We look really good on that stuff. Yeah. And, and there, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that the people are moving into town, yeah. um, um, you know, that choosing to move to a town like this, that's further away from their work um, because yeah. of the money that we get. And, our live birth rate is, um, what is it? It's like five a year. So yeah, we need that, yeah. we need people to move into town to yeah. otherwise there's no town. Just I, as I, I, just, I, I hear what you're saying, I appreciate that. And also, I mean, I also read that the hill towns are becoming increasingly unaffordable to young couples. So, I mean, some towns like uh, Leverett and Shootsbury have actually used CPA money now to uh, for a low to, for a low to moderate income, uh, young couples moving in, if they uh, keep their house in, in town for 20 years, they actually get a soft second mortgage that's forgiven because a lot of people can't cobble up, you know, the amount of money to afford the down payment to buy a house. So, I mean, yeah, and we're vulnerable to that. That's one of the mandatory categories of the CPA, and we've never in our town's history had an, even an applicant for it. Yeah. So the first project that comes along is going to get funded. Yeah. So that's why I hear what you're saying. As I said it facetiously uh, to my wife last week. It's like, well, we want a great school. Hopefully, in the future, we can actually have young couples who can afford to raise their children in Conway and send their children there. I mean, it's just, it's just something to track. That's all. I mean, it's, it's, it's something that's beyond our control because the uh, growth rate in Western Mass, really economically, is basically flat. Yeah. So. I mean, otherwise, I have no complaint. I mean, I think the school interventionist position, I mean, I, from what I just read about so many children who are being left behind with the, the hybrid model and kids who are remote, I mean, I think we kind of have no choice, in my opinion, but to, uh, to fund this position. I, I just think there's no way around it. But Alan, you mentioned 140 kids in Conway Grammar, and I think the numbers were about 50 out-of-town kids and 90 Conway kids. And yeah, right now. Right uh, back now. in and October, it was 80, 41 out of town and like uh, 84 from Conway or something like that. But in some of the towns around us, there's more out of town kids than local kids. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're still doing well. Look at Wait, the I realize that. Of course, Wait, we're coaching from Montague and Greenfield. So, I mean, it, he, he, the school committees of those two towns probably like to, to run, us, run us out of Franklin County. And probably right, probably that's New right. Waitley's the opposite ratio from us. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Waitley's under 50 and, and uh, in town and over 90 at school choice. Boy, this school choice certainly drives us nuts, doesn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I have no further discussion. Uh, Steve and Roy, have you any further discussion on behalf of the Finance Committee about this would be for the uh, 300AB, 892AB, and 320? Or is the grammar school of Conway, the Frontier Regional, and the uh, technical schools? I have, I have no further questions, comments. I mean, I'm just glad that our assessment for the regional has only gone up by uh, six thousand five hundred two dollars, whatever it is. Let's have a motion. If there's no, I, I make a motion then that we approve the uh, the Conway Grammar School Operating and Transportation, the Frontier Regional School Operating and Transportation. No. Okay. And the Franklin Technical High School's uh, uh, budget and uh, school transportation as presented. Anyone care to second the motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye as well. So it carries 3 0 in favor.
So I'm going to make the same motion for the select board, the grammar school operating and transportation, frontier operating and transportation, and technical school and transportation. Uh, we approve all three. Second. So everybody in favor? Aye. Yes. Uh, I say aye, so we're 3-0 also. Thank you. Well, we want a good school. Yeah. Hopefully young people can afford, continue to afford just to move in this town and send their children there. Certainly got excited about that playground. I mean, wow, that's that's quite, it's gonna be quite, quite a Cadillac of a playground. I mean, I might actually want to go back to school maybe in, in a couple of years and I'll go back to kindergarten. So Tom, did you want to talk about the rest of the money articles? Well, we had proposed last last time to uh, to go over the um, some of the other non controversial ones uh, that I've just that I've just highlighted, um, and I, w I I would propose also adding uh, what's on here is number fourteen. That's the uh, annual uh, subsidy from free cash so that uh, we lower uh, people's tax bills based on the amount of borrowing we did for the highway facility. That was a policy decision made back when we were discussing the financing of uh, the, the highway facility. And uh, so that's, that's the annual article that gives some free cash to, to that. Um, uh, one other thing I just want to mention is um, after this, the numbers, the article numbers on this Excel sheet are going to change. Right now, they're, they're more or less in order of money. And uh, I, I, on the warrant, I've, I've done as uh, has been suggested to me many times by many people to, uh, to put the uh, school articles after, um, after the uh, article two. Uh, so that everybody who doesn't really care about the rest of the town can vote on uh, that's that's a little unfair. But anybody who doesn't want to stick around for the rest of the uh, the voting um, and just wants to vote on the schools can do that. So um, uh, so uh, the the numbers of the articles are going to be different from what's on here from now on. I just wanted to let people know that. So again, these were proposed as, as the items <coughs> to vote on that were non-controversial last week. Yeah. You may as well. Low-hanging fruit. Well. What about item? Uh, and I would. Uh, oh, I was going to say, what about Article 12? You can put that in there too, probably. Um, I'm just I'm just going by what was mentioned last week. Oh. Um, and and anything that people want to do would be great. And any any more we can whittle this down would be great. Yeah, I. Uh, I agree with Roy. Yeah, the OPEB contribution, Article 12. I mean, I, I mentioned last week. I don't I mean, that we're doing that is good. I I would like that that to be included tonight as part of the money article package deal, so to speak. And I think we're going to remove item uh, number 11. Right. Well, there's no. Yeah. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> I mean, you can put in the library. You can put in the uh, the prior bill if you want. I mean, for, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, you know. The Baker but thank, office. thank Steve. Thank you, thank you for that blank spot where Article 11 used to be. Right. right. Oh. Yeah. Thank you for your good work. I think last week you talked about uh, the library. Yeah. The contributions we have to do it to keep our accreditation with the uh, uh, state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prior year expense, prior year expense is 20, uh, 18. The frontier capital expense, I mean, not that we have much sway in that because we're probably only about 10% of that budget anyway, if that, Tiny, maybe a little yeah. more. The assessor's recertification, I, mean, I Steve and Roy, if you have any objections or any comment, please pipe in. 
Oh, and the right. payroll from prior year, so uh, 20 and 21 as well. We pretty much got everything. Looks like all of them oh. except the retroactive pay raise. And the grant fund, grant match fund. And the big one at the bottom. All right. Well... The, the ones you highlighted, that's the low hanging stuff we can get out of the way without discussion, I think. Unless... That would be great. All right. Uh, Stephen Hoy, have you any further Congress, uh, on articles five through 10, article 12, articles 14 through 16, and articles 18 through 21? Have you any further discussion or anything or, or comments, suggestions, questions? Right. So I make a motion that we approve articles 5 through 10, article 12, articles 14 through 16, and articles 18 through 21 uh, as presented. Anyone care to second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's so 3 0 in favor. Oh, so for the select board, if I can get the same ones, we said 5 through 10, then 12, 14 through 16. 18, 19, 20, 21. Second. I'm in favor. All in favor. Aye, aye. Yes. So, yes. Unanimous. Okay. So for next Monday, we're going to go over articles 3, 4, 13, 17, and 22. Is that, Tom Hodges, is that your thought? Sure. All right, so I, 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 Steve and Roy, have you any uh, comments, suggestions on the, uh, that's the truck for the highway department, the uh, paving, which I guess, John, Tom Hudson, you're going to get back to us and talk of the uh, debt service what fiscal year that kicks in. We think it's fiscal year 23, if we were to borrow the, the 170 to do that paving stretch in Shelburne Falls Road, and then the, uh, the grant match fund and the retroactive pay rise for staff. And then the transfer for the land conservation from uh, special revenue funds. So those are, I, I, I mean, my thought, I have a question on that truck for the highway. So we have a brand new truck. It's been on the road for a little, about a year. We have a new truck on order, correct? It hasn't arrived yet. We so haven't been delivered yet. That's right. That's right. And then so, so we'll have, if proposed here, then we would have of the four trucks in our fleet, the six wheelers that we have, then we would have three that are new. Within well, the, it'll still take another year, year to get this one delivered. Yeah, so we would have uh, three out of four uh, trucks replaced within about a two-year window, a two-year-ish window. Is, is that what you're? Is that, is that the deal? Is that, is that what you're well, understanding? Three-year window. I mean, it's been. It would be one per year. Yeah. Yes, and the original intent, of course, was to stagger it. A little bit more, but because there's a kind of a backup, because for for many years the um, exhaust systems uh, for for large trucks, uh, when when the uh, emissions criteria came in, the electronics for them were really unreliable. And there was one truck that we had that was pretty much a lemon, and was in in the shop um, quite a bit, especially during the winter months. And um, Ron was really glad to get rid of it. Uh, when we did, and he didn't want to buy another one until uh, another new truck until the emissions problems were solved, and they are now. But what that means is that we're we're left with a bunch of really old trucks that need to be replaced. So that's um, that's why we are where we are, and of course, if we can stagger them a little bit going out, that would be great. All right. Well, there's none left to stagger. <laughs> Well, well, during the next round. Drive some of them more into the road than others. Exactly. <laughs> See, have you any comments? I know you were asking questions about the trucks and the, the plan. I mean, I'm not going to go for a vote tonight, but I just, I just want to bring it out for discussion. I'm comfortable with what Tom just said. I think we're catching up. This is time. I mean, the, the, this third truck we replaced, we would be replacing the 2008 truck, correct? The truck that we've already, that's still to be delivered is replacing the 1998 truck, right? That's right. 
I mean, going forward, how, what's the rate of useful life of these trucks? There might be something for uh, Ron Sweet to comment on next week since we're going to be voting on this. You know, what in his, in other words, ideally, if a truck is rated for, I don't know, 15 years or something, I mean, ideally, we'd stagger. So every, uh, every three or four years, we'd be looking to replace a truck. Now we're going to kind of stack it up. So we're, we're kind of off track in that regard. But maybe uh, Tom Hutchinson, if you can have Ron give us an idea of, of what his plans are. Because I can, if we don't, then I can assure you that the town meeting certainly will be brought up. I'm we have our, we have our iron, our iron workers who offer comment on, you know, what we should and shouldn't be doing with uh, <laughs> our heavy equipment. I, I hope the Capital Stabilization Committee will be able to answer any of those questions. Okay. All right. Well, we're, but, we're re but, well but, represented tomorrow, next Monday evening, then. But I mean, the the original capital equipment schedule was to be using vehicles for five years, was to get them new, I think, and and then try to and and then have them re. No, whatever and that right that was for equipment right. not trucks oh okay yeah but also didn't it depend on the truck and ron like, has yeah. spoken to us about the lifespan of these vehicles before yeah, but, yeah that's know. correct eric He's, yeah ron has not commented on that yes mm -hmm. it would be good if he did i think it would give us oh. better context from which to make a decision i mean i'm inclined to go forward but i think if it could be presented and we can vote on that way and then go to town meeting, I think that there would be less uh, back and forth on this topic. Bob or Roy, do you have uh, anything on that? Uh, I'm happy well, to have Ron come in. You know, if, if, if he's the, but, the expert, we can. Yes, him. it wasn't supposed to be this ganged up, but uh, there were several years we pushed forward. We pushed some of the. Uh, the uh, the planned uh, purchases uh, we put it off till the following year, so eventually you pay the piper, and uh, you know that's why it seems like um, you know here we are again with the truck, but um, but generally for the I'll review it for those I mean the um, uh, uh, Ron is just trying. He's got a theory of how to maximize the residual value on these things, how to, you know, wants to trade them in while there's still a considerable amount of uh, basis left, I guess you'd say, um, and, and get new, which have warranties and everything else. Um, but that would not be, that would not apply to something. And you could correct me, Bob, if I'm mistaken, it wouldn't reply, uh, apply to, like a backhoe, for example, am I am I correct? Or an that's, excavator? That's an example of a piece of equipment as opposed to a truck. The trucks are kind of custom built, and he, he's, you know, he's, some of them he's downgraded from four wheel drive to two wheel drive, and doesn't use a wing plow. He's putting a front plow on instead. Right, but those are the are those. The, I mean, is that in the five year equipment also? No, the not five the year. Truck. No. no, it's not because because those things you can drive uh, for a while without uh, you know without. And they're kind of custom made for us. You know, they, they, it was not a big market for them. But something like a Baco is a Baco, and it, and it, it, you know, there's there's a huge market for them. Or a... okay, so Baco was a wrong was a bad example. <laughs> okay. Um, what about? Um, we don't even have a backhoe, right? We have. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we do have backhoes. Yeah, the, the equipment, which includes things like backhoes, is what Ron wants to um, trade in after five years to maximize its resale value okay, and so, to make more okay, of so. its, the owned years under warranty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, you so know, I have it a little backwards, but a, a run of the mill pickup truck would would apply would fall into that category. Not a not a dump truck, not a you know. You know, what might be helpful if uh, if Ron Sweet could join us next week is uh, maybe well for fiscal year twenty three, or if he can't join, maybe just email it to us what what's intended for replacement and uh, that might be a good idea to look ahead for one year. Going into town meeting might help people 
have a higher, it certainly helped me, speaking for myself, have a higher comfort level that, you know, we're not looking at another, we're not looking at well into six figure uh, equipment and uh, rolling stock replacement you know, every, every year. We could definitely talk years. about that. And, and, it, and it would be good to have the, um, the schedule up so people could see it as well. Yeah, yeah, I Very agree. Thank you. Schedule. Yeah, I, I, that would be helpful. I, otherwise, really, I mean, the other articles we're going to vote on next next week. I mean, the uh, the main one to wrap our heads around it appears to be Article Four, and then Article Three, just in terms of debt service. Right. That'll take a little. Yeah. Is Jan coming next week? Jan going to be there next week? Jan Warner. Yeah. Talk about the debt service. Right. It would be helpful if, if she could. And also just to see how it would impact the budget for fiscal year 23. I don't know what it looks like. I mean, this year, we just approved fiscal year 22 that a debt service at just over 102000 But what would it look like for next year? Just might be good to have that information heading into town meeting, that's all. Okay, I can ask her. Yeah, thanks. So what you did share with us, uh, Tom Hutchinson, is that the, uh, unfortunately, each piece of debt has to be its own thing. In other words, we can't recast debt and term it out. I mean, ideally, it would be good to do that, given the interest rate environment as low as it is. But I guess we can't do that, right? That's what your email said, according to Jan, right? Well, state house notes are a, a special deal. Um, and... And so, yeah, there are restrictions on on that sort of thing. They're you're you're, you're locked in, but yeah. they're uh, they're easy yeah. to get and they're super low interest. Yes, understood. Yes, I mean I, I, it's a good interest rate to borrow money longer term, but of course we have to put it up for bid every year because the state requires it. But all right, so it's completely different from the private sector, a whole different world. Well, you, you can't consolidate, I guess, or maybe no, that's prices. correct. So you can't consolidate. It's not allowed. Nope. And the world of leasing is not allowed either. I think that I read about that. Mike Coachella sent a bunch of stuff. On it. It's been re-regulated since 2016. That leasing basically is dead. Huh. It comes to municipalities. So it's a good thing we never, never started down there. Yeah. It's. Huh. Oh well. So are there any other issues we need to talk about before next week? Uh, for the finance committee, I mean, I'm uh, Roy and Steve. I'm okay. I mean, how about you yeah. both? I'm cool. <laughs> I'm good too, Alan. All right. Well, uh, then I, I guess we're we're done here. Our work is done. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you select board. Thank you. thank you, Phil. Thank you, Arca. Thank you, Bob. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Roy. Good night. So good night. Good night we're going to continue night. on our agenda. So we have uh, any items not anticipated in 48 hours in advance. Yeah, I just got asked by somebody yesterday about the bear, about the bear stuff. When are we going to do something about the bears, the bear feeding that they asked last year? When is it going to be time to do something about the bear feeding? I don't know. Is that a police issue? I mean, no, you're, it was. A, be, I, I know all about bear feeding. Joe yeah. Colucci. That would no, be an animal it, control officer. Was it, wasn't the response that we were in need of a bylaw, that there was an inability to do anything about the non-compliant bear feeder? Yeah, there's also the perspective from the people who have bylaws that they're really super hard to enforce and don't actually end up doing much. Well, then, I suppose best not to wake the sleeping bear. <laughs> Uh, that would be Northampton, I think. Interesting. All right. So that's not an answer to your question, Phil, but sort of. No, I mean, I, it's kind of what I expected, more or less. The thing that was certainly, certainly anybody with a complaint can call Joe Colucci, our animal control officer. And that, that's, that's always the first place to start. Bear sightings are rampant in the past few days. Mm. And they're hungry. 
Yeah. Tom, do you have an administrator update? Um, I'm just going to say no. Um, what I've been doing is working on uh, a, a bunch of uh, the uh, interim town administrator uh, g getting getting people coordinated uh, for that and, and coming in for interviews and things like that. And we're also going to be interviewing for an assistant to the boards and committees tomorrow. Um, it's one of the reasons I've gotten confused with with Zoom information is uh, there, there's just a lot of a lot of meetings going on, and uh, yeah, just you know preparing for these things, uh, these meetings, and uh, I, I don't really have any news other than what you've already heard tonight. I'll put it that way. Great. They actually got more than one applicant for the assistant to the committees. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. So any select board comments? Other than that one. Any concerns? Hearing none. Tom, do we have any mail? Uh, no. Any announcements? So before we uh, before we adjourn the meeting, we need to go and pass the warrant articles that were posted slightly late. So those were those were three vendor warrants that'll be on the table for us to sign. A vendor warrant for two ninety two thousand two hundred and forty six dollars and ninety four cents. A payroll warrant for one hundred eight thousand. $705.12 and a payroll deduction warrant for $27,431.12. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve those warrants. Second. Thank you. So everyone's shaking their heads. So we'll say that is unanimous. Yep. And we squeeze that in. So that so our next meeting is April 5th, next Monday. Six o'clock by Zoom back here with Ron and hopefully Jam. And we'll see who else. So, given that, I'm going to make a motion we adjourn the meeting. Second. Good. Passes, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Meeting, but we've got a lot done.